Joseph Merrick, the Elephant Man. Joseph Carey Merrick was born on the 5th of August, 1862. He was a healthy, happy baby that seemed normal. His mother, a Baptist Sunday school teacher, named him after one of her favorite preachers, William Carey. Thus, the middle name, Joseph Carey Merrick. Around two years of age, the mysterious gray growths began to appear. They grew rapidly, and Joseph was treated as an outcast very early. He believed that elephant contact was responsible. When his mother was pregnant with him, there were some elephants crossing a road that she was also on. One of the elephants knocked her over and she was underneath the elephant and quite afraid. At this time, it was believed that the impacts a pregnant mother had could cause issues with the child. So, Joseph believed that his condition was due to the contact his mother had with the elephants when he was in her womb. Tragically, his mother died when he was only 11 years old. His father remarried and his father and stepmother both rejected him and made him feel guilty for eating. He stated once, I was taunted and sneered at so that I would not go home to my meals and I used to stay in the streets with a hungry belly rather than return for anything to eat. What few half meals I did have, I was taunted with the remark, that's more than you have earned. He found work as a teenager rolling cigars, but once his right hand became too large to do the work, he had to leave. He tried to be a door-to-door -door salesman, but people were naturally frightened and turned off by his appearance. After failed attempts to get by in the workhouses, Merrick allowed himself to become a public curiosity. He first toured with a man named Sam Tor, who named him the Elephant Man in his exhibit. Later, he worked as a penny gaff for Tom Norman. It was at Norman's exhibit that Dr. Trevis first saw Joseph. He was able to get Joseph to agree to come to the hospital, buy a taxi cab, and get an examination done. It was concluded that Joseph was in good health despite the deformities. After being presented by Travis at a meeting of the Pathological Society of London, Joseph said he no longer wanted to be medically examined because it made him feel like a cattle at a market. In time, the Elephant Man exhibit was all but outlawed, so Joseph decided to tour Europe, but similar results happened around the continent as well. Lastly, his manager stole Joseph's money and abandoned him in Brussels. Joseph returned to his home country via Liverpool, but could not get home. As he tried to get help, a crowd grew around him until a policeman came to help him. Since Joseph was unable to speak, the policeman searched him and Dr. Travis's card was found in his possession. This led to Joseph being admitted to the hospital in London. While there, he developed a friendship with Travis and Travis, who had once considered Joseph to be an imbecile, realized that he was actually quite smart and talented. He cared for him as a human being. He set up a meeting one time with a woman because Joseph had never had normal interactions with women. They were always disgusted and gasped at his appearance and stayed away from him. He longed for a relationship and even stated that he would like to go to a house for the blind because he may meet a woman there that would not care about his appearance. This never happened, but it was just something he had spoken of. He lived in the country as well and went to the theater. He also built a model church. These were things he dreamed of doing but was never able until he came into the care of Dr. Trevis. He died on April 11, 1890 at the age of 27. The way he died was by lying down. 
Because of his large head, he always slept with his head resting far against his knees. But he was in a good mood this day, and when he went to bed, he wanted to lie down as everyone else did to see what it was like. The tremendous weight of his head broke his neck, and he died. He had the testimony of being a devout Christian. And even today, people are saying that his remains should receive a Christian burial rather than remain on display as a medical piece. His friends said of him that he never talked bad about anybody. He was very kind and not bitter or resentful about his past or his condition. He also never complained. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, brief biography on Joseph Merrick, known as the Elephant Man. Um, this playlist is titled By Their Fruits, and I think if you consider the fact that his mother was a Sunday school teacher in a Baptist church, and William Carey was one of her favorite preachers, um, and she lived until the Elephant Man was uh, 11 years old, it stands to reason that he would have heard and been able to receive the gospel. Now, it's true as an adult he attended Anglican services because that was the only option in the hospital he had. If you look at his spine and his legs and stuff, he couldn't uh, just go wherever he wanted. So if uh, he had the ability to attend church, um, but it had to be in the chapel in the hospital, then that's where he went. And of course, in England, the state church was uh, the one having services in the chapel, so those were Anglican services. Um I know some Anglican churches, I checked their websites today, some say salvation is by grace through faith uh, alone and that uh, the sacraments are evidence of a person being saved. Others say that the sacraments are done to help one live the Christian life uh, in order for salvation. So that's a tricky thing. But the fact that he was raised by a Baptist, the most influential person in his life, his mother was a Baptist, leads me to think there's a good chance he was saved. And by his fruit... Uh, I would also say it lends support to the idea of him being saved because I know a lot of Christians who do have the right doctrine, the right answers, at least when you ask them about how to be saved, uh, but they can be bitter. They can harbor bitterness and be resentful. They complain. They gossip like there's no tomorrow. Uh, but as I uh, read uh, to you in this video, his friend said of him that he never talked bad about anyone, stabbed anyone in the back. He was very kind and compassionate and uh, that he never complained, given his state. He even said um, that you would be blaming God to complain about his appearance because God's one that made him the way that he was. So um, by his fruit and what we know of his past and his upbringing, I would, I would be okay with saying that chances are he's in heaven today. Perhaps he was comforted when he read that our body will be changed to be like Christ's body, and that we have that promise of glorified body coming. Um, of course, the way to get that is to be saved because Christ rose from the dead, and so you can also uh, resurrect from the dead if you are a child of God. And you do that uh, simply by trusting in Christ. You realize you're a sinner and that you deserve to go to hell because of your sins, but you want to be saved, and so you Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, knowing, as Paul wrote, that he died, was buried, and rose again, according to the scriptures, and that's the gospel. So Christ paid the full penalty for your sins in his finished work in the death, burial, and resurrection, and if you trust in that, and place all your faith and trust in that, nothing that you can do for yourself, but you trust that, then you can be saved. And I hope that Joseph Merrick was trusting in that for his salvation. And I believe, as I already stated, based on his background and by his fruit, um, I, I feel confident coming to that conclusion. If I'm wrong, then that's very sad that he had such a hard living and then um, would die and go to hell and, and would be tormented forever. But I think by their fruits, um, we can know that there's a good chance Joseph Merrick, the elephant man, is in heaven today, so praise the Lord for that.